Hello, I'm Bob Odin, UVM Field Specialist for North America at Mentor Graphics. What I'm going to describe today is a methodology for UVM config DB use that supports environment developers and test writers. We use the UVM config DB because it provides the features needed by environment developers as well as the simplicity needed by test writers. We're using it for two reasons. One is that the config DB supports a global scope mechanism as well as a hierarchical scope mechanism for passing resources. This is important for environment developers. We also use config DB for the fact that config DB only has two access mechanisms, the set as well as the get. Central to this methodology is what I call the resource table. The resource, resource table contains all information that's required by the test writers to get access to environment resources. It also is independent of the environment implementation, which is what allows test writers to gain access to the resources they need to write tests without knowing anything about the environment itself. So the environment can be a black box to them. Okay. It cr also creates a clear association between an interface in the design, the virtual interface handle that's used to access that interface from the UVM code, as well as the sequencer that's used to put traffic on that interface. So if we take this design as an example, there are five interfaces. If you identify every interface in the simulation bench that you will either actively drive or passively monitor, and it can be an interface that's on the primary I.O. of the DUT, and even interfaces that are buried in internal uh, to the hierarchy of the design. But if you list all of those interfaces that you will either actively drive or passively monitor, and enumerate them in this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is only for purposes of documentation to provide test writers with all the information they need to access those resources. The resources that we're talking about are the virtual interface handles for interfaces, configuration uh, files for interface agents, as well as the sequencers that are used to put traffic on those buses. The resource table has four columns. The first column is the interface description, which identifies the interface and the design that you're testing. The second column is the type. This is the type of interface, the type of system Verilog interface that is used to implement that bus. The third column is the transaction column. It identifies the transaction type that is placed on that bus by the sequencer. And then the fourth column is a unique identifier. It is a string. And that string uniquely identifies each interface that's in the table. This string becomes the association between the virtual interface handle as well as the sequencer that's used to put traffic on that interface. So we'll take the fields that are in this identifier column and we'll make them parameters. We make them parameters so that any errors made in the strings are identified at compile time instead of runtime. These parameters are then used when passing the virtual interface handles. So it uses the config db set function to place the interface handle into the config database. The scope for this set call is null virtual interfaces, virtual interfaces being a string. That virtual interfaces scope is a general scope that's used for all of this uh, all of the interfaces. The field name argument for the config db set call is the identifier that we set here as a parameter that came from the table. That field name uniquely identifies that interface within the config database. That same string then is passed to the agent's configuration class as a variable so that that configuration class for the agent can pull the interface from the config database using that same generic scope. The interface configuration places itself in the config database for the agent to retrieve. Once the agent has retrieved his configuration class, at that point, if the agent is active, he can take the sequencer that's inside of himself and place that sequencer into the config database using that same string that was used to identify the virtual interface handle. And the agent has access to that unique name 
through the configuration. When placing sequencer handles into the config database, I use a generic scope, which is null sequencers. All sequencers go into the config database using that same generic scope. That allows this agent to be a completely protocol agnostic agent that does the same thing for every instance of every protocol. Once the sequencer is placed into the config database using that unique identifier, then the test writer, when creating sequences, identifies a sequencer that is needed to put traffic on that bus. The, the test writer can then go to the table and if he wants to put traffic on the primary Axie master, the scope is null sequencers, the, gene the general scope that's used for all sequencers. The type that he'll be retrieving is a UVM sequencer typed to the transaction column entry. And then he'll use for the field name the unique identifier within the get call. So at that point, the test writer has all the information needed in the table to retrieve any sequencer handle needed for a sequence, as well as gaining access to any virtual interface handle from the test case, all from the information that's on the resource table here. Okay. So what that allows test writers to do is start creating tests without knowing anything about the environment so that they can spend their time writing tests rather than learning the environment because all the information they need is in the table. <laughs>